one kid in Vegas, I go, what did you miss most during co- about what did COVID prevent you from missing uh, or from from, you know, this cut, start over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the About Last Night podcast. Uh, someone who I think has been on, but not probably for, I don't know, five, six years. We did one over... Four th- years tomorrow. Did You checked. Mm-hmm. Great. Well, I was, no, but it was a few years. It feels right. I was going to check, and then I go, oh, maybe there'll be a fun bit there where we guess how long. I feel like you were going to check, but you're like, I don't want to check. <laughs> no yeah. way you're like, oh, I got to check, but there's going to be a great bit. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Because uh, uh, more and more as I get older and, and, and Omicron... Um, infiltrates, I go, I just don't care about things like that. Let me ask you something. Care about things like what? Checking like like that dates? fact for the podcast. What I care about is being present and having a great time with my bud. Let me ask you something. How many friends from the past, mm. when you get Facebook alerts for their birthdays, do you go, I got to write that down and remember to hit them up? Or do you go, if I don't remember their birthday innately, then, hey, man. Hey. Fuck you. Oh. No, no, no. Then... You know, it wasn't meant for me to give the birthday wish. Yeah, that's a that's actually a really good question. And follow up, if you can't remember oh, their phone number, hold on. <laughs> if you can't remember their phone number by heart, hey man, did it even exist? Fuck you. Oh, yeah, no, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, well, are they dead to you, Adam? Adam? Yeah. <laughs> Adam. Here we go. So I don't really use Facebook much anymore outside of uh, Magic the Gathering marketplaces. So now, for our listeners, that sounds like a joke. That's a real thing. Go on. They. Your listeners know me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, they know me. Yeah. And they know I'm quirky, but also I tell it how it is. Yeah. And how it is is if I know it's a friend's birthday because I have it memorized or I see it somewhere, I think the new Facebook notification is people you follow posting birthdays to their story. Yes. Right? Or when you when it's somebody's birthday and they get happy birthday posts a lot of times they'll repost them all so you look at their story the whole bunch of little ticks at the top right. ooh, little lines ooh it will cut that out yeah i don't know yeah <laughs> they get such a bad rap those blood sucking motherfuckers by the way <laughs> yep go ahead please <laughs> i can't wait what? oh i'm sorry to see you in a movie where you say Thank you. blood sucking motherfuckers i don't know what the movie is maybe you're an exterminator Maybe. What else would it be? By the way, that's Blade. Last night I was doing a show, and a kid tell me the, about. And a kid in the sh- in the kid in the crowd goes, uh, oh, God, oh, oh, Pickle. "Pickles is like, hey, can here, I get some more of those fake fucking treats?" Here you go, sweetie. Um, he resent the song, by the way. Um, there's a guy in the crowd who's wearing a tank top, and I asked him, "How many tank tops do you own?" Mm-hmm. And he's like, "A couple." I was like, "I don't believe you." Yada yada yada. You thought it was his only one? Or you thought he had a ton? I thought he had a ton. And he was being uh, facetious. Um, and, uh, then I go, what do you do? And he goes, I'm in college. I go, what do you want to do after that? He goes, I don't really know. And I go, this is such a consistent sentiment with anyone in that age range that I've yeah. talked to during shows. They're all like, dude, COVID sucked. Cause I couldn't go to the bars and get fucked up. One kid in Vegas. I go, what did you miss most during co- about what did COVID prevent you from missing, uh, or from, from, you know, this cut, start over. <laughs> 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 what did you miss during co- What did COVID how do I phrase this? Adam, it's good to be back, man. Yeah, COVID has changed a lot of things. I feel like when I was a kid, I also, I don't, th- I think people didn't know what they wanted to do. I think we're fortunate that we do know what we want to do at any age. Jeez. You're right. You're right. Well, this kid in the uh, crowd, well, first of all, the guy in Vegas asked Just do him, it again. Do you cry, uh, tank I got tops. two different things going on, Vegas and last night. So let's push. Well, tell us about last night. We'll be right back. And we'll... <laughs> <laughs> all right. We're back. Um, so there's a... Uh, uh, helixsleep.com slash Tyso to save up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free yeah. pillows. Now, I'm going to keep that in. Thanks. And I'm going to let your ad go in there, too. 
My uh, ad. I'm just trying to get your customers a good night's sleep while saving a few bucks. Fuck. Has there any? Has there ever been anyone who's put their foot down and not yes anded your bits? I, to where, like, right now, because I thought about this on the oh, ride over. Oh, more of a specific question. On the ride over, I go, I'll let you talk in a minute. On the ride over, I go, on the <laughs> That's right. what this podcast should be called. And everyone will be like, no, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> on the ride over, I go, has anyone ever, when Rick started to do his own ad for his own pod on another pod stopped and been like hey 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 not today yeah you're on my show you push my shit <laughs> or you get the fuck out so speaking of doing uh i don't know if that preacher amc television show or whatever thing made it in here but speaking of which there's an amazon series i forgot what it's called about uh the uh, uh jews and uh, anyway al pacino uh, is the star Inglorious Bastards? No, no. What's the name of that show? Did you not see it? It's a fantastic show. Oh, where he was, a, they were all killing, the Jews were killing the, yeah, the Nazis. Yeah, like, Nazi they killed those blood-sucking motherfuckers. Yeah. Yes. Blood-sucking motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, first of all, let me say that I don't go push my ads on other people's podcasts. What I do is I offer their audience a chance for a great product and a hell of a deal. I love that. That being said, yeah, when I did uh, uh, my last appearance on uh, Santino's Whiskey Ginger... It was a very. I don't come in planning on it. It's just you know, it's just part of like it's it's a bit. You know, we do th- bits and mine are plug-in ads, and uh, I did something for Helix Matches, and he's like, "What are you doing?" And this is like in a scene. Oh, he, oh. He, uh, so okay. I don't know if he's really mad, if he's doing a joke, or probably it's a little bit of both. You know, he's probably in, like, "What the fuck's going on?" But right. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna unplug the cameras. No. So he goes, oh, "You can't do that." I go, "I can't do what?" And he's like, "You can't do." ads on my thing yeah and i go and i agree and then i go well then stop the cameras now because the podcast is done <laughs> <laughs> and then he asked me something else i'm like well you know i guess i could answer this is a big secret but i know it's not gonna be on the podcast you know and it ended up becoming more of a bit but i really don't know how he felt about it and and when i left it got me thinking um i actually brought this up on my podcast that came out recently mm-hmm. uh, with Eric Griffin. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was talking about how part of my shtick, I do things that are, uh, at this point, compulsive. Snapping, putting on mustaches. Yeah. Where did that the... start? But... Well, we'll get back to that. But I truly want to know the origin sure. of your shtick. But one of the, one of them becomes, it's just like a muscle memory thing. You know, you just, here's a, you know, there's just a thing that yes. you do. Yeah. You have voices that you just go into and yeah. you realize I don't need to do it now. Or, ooh, here's a fun thing. Yeah. And it's just getting the reps and getting... What is that? Just conditioning yourself to yeah, go. Yeah, I, I think it's just it's a real life catchphrase. Yeah, it's just something that has worked for you because either people laugh and or you're like this feels this is a fun rhythm for me. Yes, I like you know this and, guy knows what I'm talking about. It's yeah. like one of those things. And you discover that from real life reps. You know, I think from obviously because all the things that we do off stage and on podcasts, what we do in podcasts comes from real life, not from the stage. Do you agree? I think that it depends like what on what we the do guest. with our buddies and our families. I and... think a lot of the stuff we do together is a combination. Yeah. It depends on how sincere it is. And by sincere, I mean like... Oh, we know what you mean. Honest. Because our jokes are very sincere with each other. It's yeah. why we connect so well. Right. But that's not to say that me doing an ad or doing a snap or something is the right choice. It's just that what we do uh, works so well many of the times because it's quick. You know, and there's no, is this the time to do it? You know that it doesn't matter because you'll find something. And we commit. I think there's the the lost art of committing. I I think people underestimate the value in committing to a bit, truly. It's it's over 90% of it. Would you agree? I mean, not only for a bit on stage, but for a a back and forth bit, a... I mean, you know, it's a difference between doing some funny thing and pretending to... each other's sentences. Sorry, I was. What were you gonna say? Nah, dude, this is. This is I have an you're... intimate relationship with the commitment of a bit because it has done a lot for me. Because when I was first starting out, it was like, well, at least he commits. <laughs> you know, it's like it's all I had. Yeah. Um, but as I've gotten older, and as the pandemic is happening, and and uh, I was trying to remember what you were doing with the tank top, and even you didn't know. <laughs> yeah. um, he was a ping pong coach, by the way. I know. I was. <laughs> I'm starting to appreciate how much it's not worth it, because I think sometimes. It steamrolls. I don't have the best instincts in the moment to be like, I didn't need to do that. But sometimes I feel myself, I know what I would do here. I know I want to do it, but I think I'll let this one slide. I hear you. I also do. Do you? Uh, because you I weren't looking at me in your no, typing. I, I didn't listen at all. But because, you know, every, look, this is also what I love about friendship. You pick and choose what to listen to. <laughs> look, man, I, uh, 
My fiance thinks I have ADHD. I also, like, when I'm fucking locked in, I'm locked in. I'm locked in more in these types of things. But there are times when she'll say stuff to me. And she also now is like, I mean, she's got script supervisor eyes to where, like. SSEs? Yeah, to where she, like, not only in, I mean, I was watching the new Sex in the City with her. And she uh, sees a pit. No, it, it, plug it. And just like that. <laughs> And just like that, it's technically and, and just, just like that, da da da, we still fucking. You know, I'm saying it's not called Sex in the City. I do miss Kim Cattrall. I gotta say, I saw two episodes of the actual show, um, and uh, they need, you know, they it's need a good they need, show. It is, but they need a they need they need. She, she used to comic relief, man. Kim Cattrall was like, "Hey guys, they'd be at lunch and they're like, Chair Jessica Parker, <laughs> if you haven't seen the show, I'm about to give you a horrible <laughs> abridged version." Chair Jessica Parker's like. Ah, my book. I just I went on this date last night. And I'm trying to. Yeah, I got you. Good... I got you. No, no, no. Uh, oh, I was. I'm about set to do... you up with Kim. I was. I know. No, I was I'm doing for... Kim. I know. I'm going to set you up for Kim. <laughs> okay, great. All right. So <clears> you're, <throat> Sarah, you're Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah. Great. Matthew Broderick, if you're watching, I'm sorry. Yeah, Matthew Broderick, if you're watching, I'm a huge fan <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of Sarah Jessica Parker. So I hope I do this justice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, you were great in the producers. I saw it with Jason Alexander. He guest professed a class of mine at USC. I went to the show. He was. Was a dick he in me. the producers? I just thought he did Timon. Yeah. He was Timon and Ferris Bueller. No. Psych. And Jason Alexander, I went to the show afterwards, and I told him, I go, he goes, oh, what's going on? He, he had guest professed at USC, so he got me tickets. I went to see him backstage, me and my sister. My sister and I, my mom will correct me. And she, uh, and we're back there, and he goes, uh, so what are you doing? My I sister go, and me, by the way. It's my sister and I. No. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's whenever you would say me, you say me. A lot of people force the I. Like, uh, it doesn't uh, sound right. Uh my sister and I. No, it is. No, like... no, you're right. I'm wrong. That time it is my sister and I. Yeah. But sometimes it's me. Because you now you're calling out my mom's grammar, dude. Because yeah. for years my mom's been like, ah, 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 and I. And but I sometimes go, it's hey, and bitch. me. What's that? Sometimes it's and me. It should be and me. I always say and me. And I makes me sound like I'm wearing a fucking top hat. If you were to say I am doing a podcast and you were to say Adam, Adam and I are doing a podcast. But uh, um, whose is this? It's it's mine. It's Adam and mine. It's not Adam and I's. Like, whenever you would... Uh, anyway, what? Hey, when did people stop listening to the show? Oh, when Rick went on this rant about grammar. So Jason Alexander's in the back, and uh, no relation to Kelsey Grammar. Rick, uh, Jason Alexander's in the back, and he's talking to my sister and me, and he goes, so what do you got going this summer? And I go, well, I just got into uh, the study abroad program in London. I'm going to spend my junior year in London. And he goes, ho, 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 ho. I'll never forget that. George. And I love you, Jason. Hope to have you on the pod. It almost happened once. Maybe we can get that going again. You're but telling me. He looked at me and goes, oh, oh, oh. Alex, after I told him I got accepted. But he's joking with you, right? Yeah, hey, man. Funny. Hey. here's Now, what would you do if you did that to somebody? And you had a relation. Okay. Our relationship versus he and I's relationship. Alexander and grammar aren't related? <laughs> we'll be right back. Can you do a Kelsey Grammar impression? That's one of the first ones I tried to do. I can't I can't do any impressions other than Kelsey Grammer. So what are the chances? Ready? Here, <clears throat> here's Kelsey Grammer ordering a coffee at Starbucks. I'm the barista. Wait a minute. A venti? A tall is big. Grande is big. Vente means 20. I just watch role models. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's my Kelsey Grammer. Niles. I don't want to start over because this is what it is. But I am feeling something right now, which is something that I've... Uh, felt a bit in my late 20s when I realized I'm a bit much, which is, <laughs> Rick, you're going on Adam's podcast. You're always high and we're always doing bits. Let's just have a regular conversation. Me too. I'm sober too. Oh, you're a little high. You took an edible. No, not at all. A little coffee. Whoa, whoa, and just, whoa, I get whoa, high whoa, when I'm whoa, with whoa, you. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's my energy. That's my new thing. Anytime someone just decides to go, whoa, whoa, hey, hey, hey. I saw uh, Sebastian at the comedy store the other night and I go, uh, he goes, uh, I'll finish that later. He goes, <laughs> no, it sounded like a great Kelsey Grammer story. And so he goes, something about you in your 20s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Keep going. <laughs> and so and so I see Sebastian at the comedy store, and he goes, uh, uh, he goes, who is that? And I take my mask, and he goes, oh, what's up, Adam? And I go, what's up, Sebastian? And then he goes, uh, he goes, how you been? I go, great. And then I go, uh, I go, you know, I just, I go, how you been? He goes, I go, How's, is the cooking show on? He goes, yeah, cooking show's on, raising my family. And I go, awesome. He goes, you got kids yet? And I go, whoa, 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 whoa. You married guys are always trying to push the fucking families on single guys. I go, I'm not single, I'm engaged. He goes, congratulations. You got kids yet? I go, nice, dude, doubling down on the kid question. And then we had a nice laugh, and then I left. Our guest today has been Rick Glassman <laughs> of the Take Your Shoes Off podcast, which 
My boy Brian here, producer, thought the show was called Take Your Socks Off. Now, Rick, this might be an opportune time for you to sit the fuck down and address... Oh, man. <laughs> Turning the lights off during someone else's pod is the equivalent of pulling the mic on an open micer when he runs his time and all his friends are there. Who that happened to? Me. Wait, we'll be right I didn't back. hear you. What was that? So, Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> no, we have fun. ADD, yeah. you think, or ADHD? Yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah. Maybe some ATD. Not going to work here anymore, that's for sure. No, but it's funny that you so bring that up. Because tank wonder, tops. Oh, go ahead. I really want to know. Let's. We're not starting over because I love all this. But the point was Santino kept it in. Because at the end of the day, a bit is a bit. Uh, but that was when I first realized, oh, I'm not sure. Like, I'm just doing a joke. But if the other person isn't aware of it or doesn't care, then the joke is maybe f- making them uncomfortable because they have ads. It's a business. Yeah. And I, uh, I've i been doing ads since before I got ads. I was doing fake ads. I was doing ads for Marshall Rug Gallery, my dad's rug store. I'm doing ads for Bomba socks because I love them and they're not paying me. You know, so to me... Doing ads is a kind of a like just one of my bits, but I am like uh, just like a lot of other bits. Some you know they do it, and I, I pride myself on I have these bits that like are a bit compulsive, but like they have then they find a new one. Yeah, and uh, and uh, I don't think I'm done with the ad stuff because it is fun, but I do feel myself like when when there's a when there's a moment to like oh you mean you're not sleeping well you try, you know like if there's a pocket for it yeah, but I do feel myself being like all right Rick I'm getting a little sick of that joke cool. not because it's ads just yeah. because i've done that joke a lot which is tough as a stand-up comic i feel that way on stage a lot and you and i have talked about this yeah if i've done this joke a certain amount of times i i feel uncomfortable continuing it yeah well it's just evolving and growing and if you feel like something's getting stale yeah maybe it's not stopping doing the ads maybe it's finding i mean you've truly found every which way more than i think anyone has with ads to do them in a fun, clever way. The one that you got both your folks to do with the Helix mattress Come on. is maybe, and I told you this, I was, it, it sucks that, and I've said this before, how little I laugh until I cry. But I can count on my hand probably the amount of times it's happened in the last five years. So it means five at the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Pickles is taking out the rage on a uh, little toy because, I don't know, maybe she was fed fake invisible treats from a stranger. Um Sorry, if I, I didn't give her invisible treats, she would have been like, I'll be quiet. <laughs> that, by the way, what does that say about my dog? Man, it's a dog. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell you we accidentally uh, left out some edibles and she ate them um, during the pandemic? No, she's not 10, chocolate, right? She, she's 10 pounds. She ate about 15 to 17 milligrams of gummies. Piggles, you got to shut the fuck up. If there's, um, I love you, if there's a... Uh, she looked at me like uh, he's like. She looked at me like we're parents, and like I have the final say. <laughs> Do I have to shut up? Are you not going to say anything? Oh man, Hi, she, sweetie. Yes. She uh, at eight a.m. I uh, well, I finished. Well, the tell me about sto- the cellular story. Well, yeah. so we have the edibles out, and she um, she ate them, and she she was just staring at the wall. I mean, when you have a podcast studio, it's so things look and sound consistently good. Yeah, that's the reason you have one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't want to leave her by herself. I'm leaving for Australia on Sunday. I want to maximize every moment I got with her. That being said, yes, dear God, oh God, fuck. You know what my uh, stepdad George calls her? Dog. And him. Doesn't even know that Pickles is a girl. And calls her dog. And he's got this southern twang, so it's like kind of racist. Where he's like, hey, dog. And you're like, yeah. It's not like racist. It's just like a bad Randy Jackson impression. <laughs> we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. know each other? This is the Courtney I told you I was falling in love with. Oh, that is so funny. What a small world. (laughs) 
could you do this to me? We dated for two weeks. Yeah, three years ago. Is that why you didn't come to my son's magic show? You have a son? You haven't returned any of my texts or Facebook messages. I just didn't want to see you ever again. Well, you could have told me that to my face. How did this even happen? Tinder. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, she was so funny. You initiated with me, actually. You sent me that. I didn't mean to. <laughs> you you accidentally <laughs> sent me an emoji. You had that dog in your profile picture, but you don't even have a dog. I don't even have a dog. That's you loved it. It's somebody else's, <laughs> but hey, it worked. I got you, didn't I? And then you said, uh, "I'm coming over. Let's fuck." <laughs> and then we fucked, and you're like, "I don't love anybody else, right?" And then while we were fucking, you were like, "God, this is the best I've ever had." <laughs> Like I was dating this guy for two weeks once, and it was the worst. Folgers Coffee, you made it. So she eats the edibles. She's staring at the wall, and we're like, "We're high too." When you're also high, you can't tell your dog's fucked up. You need lots of signals. Her staring at the wall was just like, "Fuck, dude, we aren't that interesting tonight." Or like, <laughs> you guys what like, you "What's, what's on that wall?" It's just a three of you. <laughs> Hilarious. Thank you. Then she started. <laughs> Oh, wow. When people do that shit to me, <laughs> bye. Funny. You do that. You do that more than anybody. Sincerely or making a joke? I think you do it sincerely, actually, now that I'm saying it. I think when you go, funny, you mean it. No. I, here, just, it doesn't mean I don't think it's funny, but if I go, funny, I'm doing that, I'm doing it as like a thing. But I think you also mean it. No. Doesn't mean it's not funny, but the right. th thing I'm telling you is a little, little condescending. What makes you laugh? Fuck. What makes you truly, just to get back to the laugh till you cry, your Helix mattress ad with uh, with mom and dad um, was maybe one of the funniest thing I've ever seen, ever. You know what I'm saying? And especially for an ad. <laughs> huh? I think I get it. And if not, I might need some help. And that's better help. Go to betterhelp.com slash Tyso to save up to 10% on your first month. Nah, man, we're a talk space family over here. Oh, really? Yeah. I was BetterHelp for a while. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Got some wires crossed. They just stopped advertising with you? No, I uh, had some talk space ads come through, and I just forgot and did both. <laughs> and they were like, hey, man, you can't do both. And I was like, oh, yeah. They're like, would you advertise McDonald's and Burger King? And I was like, yeah, I've yeah. got McDonald's fries and the Burger King tender crisp chicken sandwich. Thank you. You get it. Seriously. And you know what? If, if you need to pick one or the other, pick whatever have the best odds and bet on it. And that's FanDuel. Head on over and download the <laughs> FanDuel app and use promo code TISO for, I don't know what this week's Oof. thing is, but I mean, fuck, dude. The Super Bowl's me. coming out. You got me there. Hey, and if you're uh, looking to get in shape for your bets, go head on over to fitbod.me slash about. Yes, I remembered it. For the... Um, for 25% uh, off your first uh, your workout. Because working out at home is oh, a fucking bitch. Especially what happened during the pandemic. You can't get to the gym. And Even no one if you wants do, to make... it's dirty. Yeah, 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 And nobody wants to make time for that workout. And, and personal trainers can add up. So with FitBod, man, you can fucking personalize your workouts. But you and... can only do it once, right? And then that's it. They don't let you use it again. <laughs> no, I... Is that, is that it? No, I'm sitting here to be like, no, that's the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great. So you could, it's probably $500. You use it once, and it's great, but then you can't do it anymore, right? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. <laughs> now you got to be, no, that's the thing. No, no, that's the thing. What? <sighs> I don't know. Uh, all right, so, so, so I'm saying it's way more money. Right. I'm basically setting the bar up here. Oh, so I got gotcha. That's the thing. Not only is it. You could use it multiple times, and as you do, you learn. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. I don't know the product, but I have to imagine it's not 500 bucks. Yeah, 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 shut the fuck up. So, um... What? Man, so, <laughs> what the fuck did you say to me? <laughs> I just wanted to see your reaction. You ever just do stuff just to get a reaction? No! Oh. Ha! <laughs> Never! <laughs> so, you did that ad with your folks, dying laughing. So, I want to know from you, because you and I have had a lot of laughs. Like, to the point of oh, yeah. crying. Mm -hmm. And I want to know, though, how many of like those... you want to know because you've been asking me this for five minutes. That I have. How many of those in your life outside of friends and goofs do you get... Like, in a movie, will you watch a movie and get genuinely... Yeah, it happens. Yeah. When you don't expect something and the thing you don't expect happens and it works, that's always a great treat. Will like you... Tony Robbins? Go on. Tony Robbins says that exact thing. Does he? Maybe. I mean, that's the definition of a left turn. You know, oh, I didn't expect that. But just because you don't expect something doesn't make it funny. But yeah. if there's something like that you wouldn't have thought of or didn't in time, right. and then it happens and you're like, 
almost were like, yeah, fuck. That's, yeah. you know, like even yeah. just that, you know, uh, and then also something that uh, I talk to DeWalt about this often, uh, all the time. Love me some John DeWalt. Um, we love, I know people do, but he and I love confidence. There's something so funny about confidence. Wow, interesting. And that's why, um, and there's, I'm sure there's a lot of reasons, but there's a black comic energy that just is like at the top. Yeah. You know, like when you're doing a black room or watching at home, you know, watching stand up at home, it has to be well directed and hilarious yes. to laugh out loud a lot. It's just hard when you're not there. But when you watch a Def Jam something or an Apollo or anything that Martin Lawrence is hosting, there's just this energy that is, they're all on the same page. It's a, I don't know if black people are inherently more confident, but there's a confidence, there's a coolness, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't know. So when, when people are very confident, even if it's false, even if it's like they're, they're playing, the, they don't realize they're the heel, you know? Do you feel like you can tell when it's false? Do you feel like when someone, when you're around someone that is... It's confidence. I mean, is it like can you can you detect when it's genuine and when it's been built up and acquired? I think a lot or... of the time, but it doesn't matter. I think a great analogy. A great analogy is when people say "Grown Ups" isn't funny. The movie. The movie. Because, yeah, I'm laughing at it, but it's because this is so stupid or blah blah. blah. It's like stop trying to figure out why you're laughing at it. Mm. I mean, you could sure, but don't give that a bias against there being a problem with it. You're laughing out loud at Grown Ups. Some of the jokes are funny. Some of them are absolutely ridiculous. Shaq has a, has, has a weird bald thing. He's throwing people over roofs. Yeah. The Kevin James makes... on the rope swing. Hilarious. Kevin James fart. <laughs> Do you remember in the second one where he oh, yeah. farts, sneezes, and burps yeah. sort of at the same time? Yeah. So if a confidence, even if it's fake, like I was, uh, I had Lamorne on and I talked to him about this very thing, actually, because uh, he loves to lean into confidence. His His character, one of his funny characters is confident, but it's it's a guy that's, that his character thinks that you believe it. Right. Like, if you know that I'm not successful, and I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, my, my Lamborghini is just, you know, it's everything is a compact spot now. Everything, oh, fucking saving energy. And I, I'm sorry, my, my gas goes, you know, whatever it is. Horrible example of a confident <laughs> joke. But, like, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. Just, just it's the delivery. It's the cadence. It's the energy. It's the energy of... Uh, I'm the man. It's yeah. just funny. We like that. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's because we want to be that. Well, Steve Carell, Alec Baldwin, and 30 Rock in the Office. Like, that's a funny confidence, but also you gravitate towards that. We, I think, innately just like to see Great people... Great examples, because those are two... Steve Carell's faking it, and Alec Baldwin, it's real. I don't think Steve Carell's faking it. I think... Michael Scott is faking it. Michael Scott thinks that everyone thinks that he is funny yes. and a man, but... I, I think he's looking at life through a different lens. I think Alec Baldwin... I think those are two confident guys in in how do I explain this? Alec Baldwin, Jack Dunahy thinks he can get the girl, but so does Michael Scott. You know what? I, I can have this argument with you. It's not even argument. A little bit. We're, we're not fighting. <laughs> Michael Scott. Michael Scott. He looks at life through a different set of goggles, dude. Where Michael he, Scott though wants to be liked, wants to be accepted. Yes, and he isn't. And Alec Baldwin doesn't give a fuck because he just knows he is. Alec Baldwin is the boss. Yeah. Me literally gotcha, and gotcha. and as a, you know, whatever the other one is, metaphorically. Alec but, Baldwin's a little bit of a likable asshole and uh, knows he can throw his weight around. Michael Scott wants to throw, wants to be, Michael Scott wants to be Alec Baldwin. Mm -hmm. How about that? Right? Oh, yeah. He wants to throw his weight around. And because, like, there's, there's like, that great uh, moment with um, Michael and Jim in the um, uh, the convention episode when he's in the party and Jim with his new boss are laughing and he's like, I'm a Dory Sour if you don't mind. And then Michael, and then they laugh and, and then and then uh, Steve Crow goes, <laughs> and yeah, he wants go, to be on yeah, and they jokes. go, oh no, it's an inside joke. And Steve, Steve Crow goes, oh, I love inside jokes. <laughs> love to be a part of one someday. <laughs> and it's just so honest and so awkward. Mm -hmm. And so you're right, like Alec Baldwin would be like, I don't get it, and make some... That's some... why you don't cry at 30 Rock, and you do in The Office, yeah. because Steve Carell's character, by design, because 30 Rock is a joke machine, and it's, it's a, they're both top five comedies to me, yeah. but Steve Carell is... You understand him, and you root for him, and you see his wants, and he wants to be part of things. Yes. But still, just those... Yeah, confidence, whether it's earned or not, is just funny. Now, tell me this. On your new Amazon show, coming out 
It'll be out. It comes out then. It, I'm sure this will be out by then. This is coming out Wednesday. Oh, then it comes out in a couple of days. On the 21st on Amazon. Awesome. Name of it? As We See It. Cannot be happier for you. Thanks. Because I think you're a truly great actor, and I think Undateable, your first real acting job, yeah, um, was a good starter gig, right? Was there's yeah. a lot of variables, but I don't think you had all the weapons at your disposal, and it also just wasn't a that show wasn't there wasn't as much spreading it around. It was just classic kind of sitcom where it was like, yeah, you got a couple main parts, and then a lot of things. People, no show can you really get on board with a character if they're coming into the episode with like what five six lines an episode. Yeah, well, my my role in that show and people's roles on shows a lot, uh, and it's something I learned. You know, during the, the taping of like second season of that show, because I, I I wanted to have more lines and you know, blah 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 and ego, and then you realize that like oh by design these things my job isn't to be the character that everybody likes and it's like I'm just I'm getting rebounds you know right which is also you need that guy every team needs a Dennis Rodman and you were great at that um, I was I, I wouldn't call me a Rodman you were, yeah you were more of a um, Rodman, Rod, Rodman served a lot more see even Pickles didn't agree she's like you're more of a Greg Oster tag yeah somebody that like anybody could have done it <laughs> um, I do think that this Amazon show is Pickles you got it hey hey come here I do think this Amazon show is going to uh, hopefully give you a nice boost and give you more opportunities to flex I think a real Robin Williams type quality that you have which is to be real silly and goofy and be and be big and animated. And then get real sincere and have um, some some yeah. genuine heartfelt moments. We all I think want that, don't we? Like, I mean, 1, we're out here. Who are the guys that you aspired to have the careers of? I mean, I don't know if aspired to have a career as much as who inspired me as a person and as a performer. Great. Um, and I actually, I know you know, but uh, I had him on the podcast. It hasn't come out yet. Um, but uh, is Will Smith? Yeah. Who, who I watched as a kid be able to be goofy. And people, like, he didn't fit in in certain ways, but also he was able to play cool. Yeah. And, like, oh, you could you could be both. I could still maybe be cool. So that was your first. Fresh Prince and The Simpsons taught me about comedy. Uh, maybe something else did. I mean, as I far as, like, watching people, not, like, family and experiences, because my family is, you know, a lot of cadences and comedy from them. But watching on TV, joke structure from The Simpsons and how to play – not that I'd do it like him, or but like that, like being able to be silly, but also like still he doesn't have to define you. Man, he's and he does it in the same, not just in the same episodes. He'll do it in the same scenes. You know, he'll <clears throat> when when Carlton is uh, when they're both pledging for the same fraternity. Yeah, and uh, one of my all-time fave episodes of TV. They think Carlton is being too white for whatever that means in that moment of time. Yeah, that was also the first. That show in Family Matters, which I are two of my favorite shows of all time, and I don't know what that says about me growing in a, uh, up in a very like, you know, uh, definitely like white cul-de-sac neighborhood type. But Same, I, by the I way, those gravitated are my two to those shows. shows so hard, and is truly where I learned about those types of issues, because I don't think I was learning about them in school really. Because can I guess the the Family Matters one? And there's a few good ones, but to me. It's and I think we both know what it is. Say it's the when same time. when Eddie when gets pulled Steve over. Steve fucks the chair. What? Oh, yeah. When Eddie gets pulled over yeah. by the cops. Yes. Definitely. And yeah. and his he at first Carl because Eddie's has a little bit of a troublemaker. He's like you know Eddie fuck, takes kind the of side of up. the cop. Mm. And then he's he's like you have you know it's it's easy to even get watery eyed at that moment. You have to just you're my dad. You know like you have to believe me. And then Carl goes down to the diner and uh, and addresses the two cops and. Phil, there's an episode of Fresh Prince when Phil does this too when they get arrested and he walks in and and they don't know who Philip is yet. Do you remember when uh, when when Will and Carlton are in the jail cell and and that that biker guy is singing uh, "Let My People Go"? So funny. That those moments are like, and even then I saw it happening and it made sense, but I didn't really appreciate at least as well as I can that stuff for real until Black Lives Matter movement. Has, Happened the first time at yeah. like 2015, 2016. At least that's when I became aware of it. Mm. And then I started to see, like, watch those because people were posting clips. And also, I just always watch these shows. Yeah. And it was like, holy shit! That as a kid, I didn't, I still couldn't appreciate what that, yeah. that what that was. So I wonder what like what black people felt like watching Family Matters. Did that mean you know? I think so. Yeah. Let's I mean, find out. Let's get them on the line. 
Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Lamorne, I got I got you on my, my buddy Adam Ray's podcast here, and we're having a conversation that I sincerely want your thoughts on. Do you have th- an hour? <laughs> no. All right, can I ask you a quick question? 40 seconds. No. All right, I'll talk to you later, bud. All right, man, peace. Bye. <laughs> Wait, he said... Yep, you're right. See? He was doing a bit, and you cut it. But that was you being respectful. Also scared. <laughs> Hello, Lamorne's phone. Hey, uh, may I speak to to Lamorne? Yeah, this is he. Lamorne, uh, listen. Um, Let's get to it. We're watching. We're talking about family matters and some yes. of the. What's that? Yeah, this is he. He is here. Uh, we're ta- we're talking about family matters and Fresh Prince and some of the serious moments that got us and are are being two white people first experiences and seeing some of these real stories like when Eddie gets pulled over by the cops and. Uh, Eddie thinks it's because he's black and, and, and Carl has to approach it and all these things. And we were wondering, uh, like, that was our first experience. But you, as a black man, a strong black man, already know about this this world. And you're watching this stuff and wondering how silly shows like that, if they affected you in any way or meant something to you. Or you... Yeah. yeah, because as a strong black man... Um, now a strong black lead in television, doing both as a black man and as a black lead. Hell yeah! Um, you know, back then we didn't have representation. You know, on, on white shows you had the you had the benefit of having both. You had the comedy, the slapstick, you know, um, multicam sitcoms, but then you also had your dramatic shows that will show the the young white boy mm. how to be that young, what young white boy. You know what I'm saying? They would have those no. positive influences, how to be a young, strong, young Jewish boy. With, <laughs> like with Corey strong, Matthews? With like Corey Matthews. You get what I'm saying? Like his, you know, even even those little boys on uh, Home Improvement, Tim Two Man Taylor. Well, he was you an know adult. What I'm saying, was a great role model. Oh. He was a great role model. Was he Jewish? You know what I'm saying? But so, on Family Matters, they had to put it all in one. We only got one opportunity at a TV show. Wow. Well, so it was like, hey, who is your favorite character on Family Matters? Who is your favorite? Who is your favorite? Uh, Adam wants to know who your favorite character on Family Matters is, and I'm gonna tag team that and ask, and why? Uh, I mean, it's the girl who went upstairs and never came back down. Then she started doing porn. Right. Know, right. right. The sister. Uh, my favorite. My favorite character is. Obvious is Jaleel, Jaleel White. Shout out to Jaleel White. We put his Instagram handle up here, by the Call way. Hold on a second, too. Um, all right. Thanks, what about man. Aunt, what about Aunt, Aunt Rachel? I had a huge crush on Aunt Rachel. Aunt Rachel was was pretty. She was she was she didn't do what Kelly Kapowski did to me, but did she do that for you? But let me ask a better question <laughs> instead of uh, what what characters, white or black, give Lamorne a boner. Is um, what was your take on every time they cut to Rachel's place? It was clearly a CGI sign. Whoa. And at what season they're going to Disney World? You know, <laughs> could they just get a fucking Rachel sign? Lamorne, speak on that. All right, bud. Talk to you later. <laughs> it still says he's going, but uh, well, I don't know. That's fine. Yeah. So this show could be um, your Amazon show. What's it called again? Uh, as we see it. As we see it. And give me the breakdown. It's following people it's that about, are autistic. I could do this because I've been doing this. Oh, uh, yeah. You've been in the press wheel. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's about a, a three twenty somethings living their, uh, on the autism spectrum, living their life, uh, trying to have independence, uh, relationships, maintain a job and friendships, uh, all while struggling with obstacles that neurotypical or diverse we all experience. And it's just told through the lens of these people who have a specific set of obstacles. Yeah. Now, here's the truth. It's and and also I don't know if it's a worry, but like something I I want people to want to watch this. Oh, the and trailers I uh riveting is too much. Uh captivating, close. I watched it. <laughs> <laughs> the trailer was really it's good. It's out. I texted you. Yeah. I, the trailer was really great, man. And it got me really pumped to watch it, and it got me extra pumped for you. Because I go, people are going to respond to this trailer. If they watch the show, I, I, they will really like it. It's just that the subject matter is quite dense. Yeah. And, it's the, the, and, and I didn't know how funny it would be, because they were calling it a dramedy, and it's not. It's a drama. But now after watching it, there's so many laugh-out-loud moments. Oh, good. Which is great. Because, if there weren't, would you be uh, hesitant to push it and promote it? Not at all, because... Because not everything needs to get a laugh, but but what's so? Yeah, I sure didn't. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. This is. 
I've got gonorrhea. <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> see, we find our tools. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's important to get laughs for, on a show like this, not just because we're in the business of wanting them and feeling that's our value. That's that's why I was asking. But there's there's something to like, there's something to like. Um, people feeling like uh i don't know about this subject or this subject isn't for me or i don't want to feel this thing right still which sucks and i I, there's a great i have a uh, you know and there's a tool that stand-ups use when they're speaking about themselves in a way that the audience can't necessarily relate for example microphone no no oh jews talking about jews black people talking about black people gay and queer talking about that where people in the audience who relate to the comedian if they think it's funny, there's no, there's no sense, there's no like, am I allowed to laugh at this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's almost like the audience feels consciously or subconsciously they need permission to laugh, and that's our job as the comedians to get them in a way where they feel part of this thing enough to once you get your foot in the door, then you could be more, they're allowed to laugh, right? Okay. okay. So I think there's something with this subject matter that's quite serious that the audience is laughing at, where they feel like, oh, this isn't foreign to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you think it's going to be not uh, you're, it's not like hitting people over the head with the subject matter, but it's it's easily digestible. I think it's both. I think I think that you get you get your foot in the door with you. You start to you can empathize with characters that you normally at, at on, that people may not have too much experience understanding. It's not like Rain Man, who is this savant who is really good at toothpicks and like what do you mean good at toothpicks? Just if he has something in his mouth, he can get it out. I've never seen the movie. I heard he does something with toothpicks. Do you think that would be on his resume if he were an actor? Good at toothpicks? It's not on Michael Douglas's resume. It's on Michael Douglas's? Is Michael Douglas Rayman? No, Just, what's his name? Dustin Hoffman. Dustin Hoffman. What's the difference? At the end of the day, there are a couple of old white guys. We need more have you, women. Young, hot women. <laughs> have you ever, white. <laughs> no, you know what? They're all the colors. Have you ever heard? Let's get Dustin Hoffman on the phone right now. How much do you think I actually have his phone number in here? I think you're playing both parts and I'm confused. Oh, I know what we're doing. Yo, 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 yo. Hey, Jeff, you're on the About Last Night podcast right now. We're talking about Dustin Hoffman. You mind just uh, give me a quick little Hoffman right now? We're talking about how good Dustin Hoffman is at using toothpicks. Can you verify this? I don't know what I'm doing, but I try to do what I can because I'm trying to just kind of hold the tube, try to squeeze. <laughs> I don't know how long to squeeze for. I think you got so you're a toothpaste. Just... I say, tell him toothpicks. Oh, D- oh, Dustin, I said toothpick. Toothpicks. Stop him. Stop him. Dustin, I said, <laughs> Dustin, I said, hang up, hang up, hang up. Dustin, I said toothpick, not toothpaste. How good he is at toothpicks? Oh, tooth, but it's the same answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, dude. Well, then let him talk about toothpicks. Okay. All right, yeah, talk about toothpicks. What was it like filming Rain Man and, and, and counting all those toothpicks? Did you know the number in advance, for, or was it in the script, or did you really count them? Come on, you're, you're coming at me too hard. What are you at? How much caffeine did you have? <laughs> Hang up the fucking phone right now. We, we, we're trying to be very focused with the lines, with the cinematography. And the Tom Cruise is a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where I was. <laughs> I said it was at the DMV, but I took an Uber and ended up at Rite Aid. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Dustin. All right, have a good night. Bye, buddy. His is his uh Jeff Richards because uh, he does the the filters over to make the things oh the man. faces where it's clearly it's not like a great deep fake it's just a close enough Sh- shout out to that go follow Ed, yeah. I think the Jeff Richards show or Jeff Richards I'll on Instagram it's they're they're like legitimately incredible oh there's a clip with Bill Burr he did where it's uh, actually I'm gonna pull it up but he just did one with um he did one with uh, Saget where he was uh, Fallon and um, it was uh, uh it was really incredible. Um, the the Jeff Richards. Okay, you can't find the one with Burr, can you? I don't know. At this point, let's just you know, if, if you have it, <laughs> what it is. But I mean, people are just watching us look stuff up at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about your laugh. Yeah. Um, and I want to see if we could, you and I, could tap into being serious for a second, just because there's a lot of sure ways around this. And this is a real question. Got about 90 seconds. Okay. Do we really? No, we got about 20 minutes. Do we really? Yeah. I watch uh, your podcast sometimes and see... I watch your (laughs) podcast, comma, and sometimes I see you as a podcast host. Hmm. Now, I don't mean that in a bad way. In fact, 
maybe I mean it in a good way, but at least it's just an observation. You mean it in a way. I mean it like it's a, just a real observation because we have jobs to do. I think I know what you mean. Right? Yeah. And I see you. And, and, and this is what we do. Sometimes there's some ob- challenges that, that maybe aren't intuitive to people that don't do this, which is when it's your show, you're literally hosting somebody. Yeah. When, you, when we do each other's podcasts, it's, it doesn't matter that it's your show or my show. The only difference is I could picture what I'm going to be editing. But like we're, just, we're both just there, right? right? But when it's somebody that like we don't know well or maybe not at all – or we're doing more of an interview because we are interested in certain things. There's certain like tools that we develop that uh, they have their pros and their cons, right. right? For me, something that I'm trying to get better at, uh, and I, I is don't take as big of swings as frequently with people who don't know you or the format yet, Rick, because w- they're going to shine the most when they're comfortable. So try to get let them get comfortable first, and I have to be conscious of. Because I'm comfortable, I don't know that they're not yet, right? Unless it's so established with them, or they're so familiar with the, with the the backdrop of what you're doing. If that they, they are, yeah. But sometimes you think you're taking swings with people that aren't more often than not. You know, you have to. You just have to be conscious of it. You have to check in with them. You know, yeah. I like to sometimes beforehand send them a clip. You know, just. But what I'm getting at is there's tools where it's like you can't just always pretend like you're talking to friends and family. Sometimes right. you have to be a host. Yeah. And I see you do this sometimes because also what you do more than me is you do you've been doing Zoom stuff, which is even harder because like you're trying to do you know you're just trying to keep a pace. This is a long winded way around saying so I watched I watched different friends find their host voice yeah and everyone does it differently some for better some for worse and something I noticed with you is you, one of your I don't know if it's a host thing or if it's real or a combination. There are some laughs that you do yeah. that I also think that thing was funny. But I feel like if you were not hosting, yeah. you may not have laughed. Does that make sense? A thousand percent. And you're and you're right. I think that you do have a job as a host to make the person feel good to uh I think and this is why I asked the question of like how often do you genuinely like yeah. laugh till you cry? I unfortunately don't feel like i have i think i have a not a wall up or thick skin to stuff that really makes me laugh so right now i'm i feel like i'm just a big appreciator of stuff and so even in the moment like when something happens and i go man that's really funny but i don't feel compelled yeah to but i know how i want to respond to that right um it's easy for me to like to to tap into that and still have that reaction and not have it feel uh, disingenuous. Is it a conscious decision that you're calculating, or is it no? Uh, so it's just like oh, oh, funny. Like it's basically what we were talking about before, but serious. Like the funny, just because I acknowledgement. Still, the right? same way of doing a joke that maybe has that is um, just not factual or truthful or honest, and you know, or um, or uh, shit. I remember when a buddy uh, wrote a little. Pickles wrote a little tag for me and I did it and it didn't and I was already kind of skeptical about it. This was maybe like, I don't know, three years ago. And uh and it sounded funny. I was like, oh I'll try it. And even doing it out of my mouth, not being my own words, right. I, I couldn't taste it, if that makes sense. Yeah. And so um but when uh there have been times for sure when I've felt myself force a laugh to um to fill the moment. Are we talking about on stage or in oh a in podcast? a podcast, right. yeah. But it's very rare. It so even though you're getting Maybe a laugh that's not as full and raw as you want it to be, but you know that this is the spot for it. Uh, it's still being fueled by actual joy and appreciation for the moment. Right. But I, but but, uh, but but yeah. But, but the but outward, the outward physicality and noise. I think it's so a, second nature now that that I'm not putting a little something extra on it. That it's it's coming up, but then I'm having to like kind of push it out. Does that make sense? It it's does. It's like you're sense. having a baby. Like you're having a com- You're having a giggle baby, and they're like push, push. And you're like, I'm a guy. I can't even believe I'm giving birth to this thing. Yeah, but but the baby is that co- a baby needs to come out. Pickles, shut the fuck up. A baby is in you yeah. and it's coming out. Yeah, that analogy to me doesn't work because Great. if the laugh isn't really in you, it wouldn't come out. So well, the baby's in me. All right. So you're taking a shit. What I want to know is, have you found that laughing yeah. in those moments? Does it help you more or does it help the guest more? Both. Because now we're loose. Because oh yeah, oh yeah. Because I also can just like I can differentiate 
Because I know right. how honest, right. I know how present I am, and I know how honest I am, and I know that, again, that even though, let's say you fabricate a joke on stage, right? You have things that are based in truth. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Brad Williams does this better than most, I think, where he takes nuggets of things that are based in truth and then fucking embellishes yeah. and creates a world that doesn't even exist but does now for the joke and people... Right. It doesn't matter if they truth. believe it or yes, not because they but they it's based in it. some truth, and that's how I operate as well. But not, I don't embellish as much. I like to have as much of the story be there as possible. But so for the laugh, um, it's got to be based in real. Like, I, like I said, I'm connected to it. Yeah. But then, yeah, there's, there's, it's getting, it's getting a, a little, it's getting supersized, McDonald's style. You know what I'm saying? Now this I get. So I, I got the regular fry from McDonald's. Yeah. What'd you get from Burger King? Oof, probably the chicken fries. Do you all right, set another question on top of the laughing thing? Because this is really like uh See, that was a real laugh right there. Yeah. You know? I, I know the difference. But, yeah. But so I I guess what I'm saying to fully answer your question and then we'll move on is I don't want to move on. Okay. But uh, fully is, answer. Is to um I know when it when and because I and I don't allow for myself to to do it. I know that if I'm putting a little something on extra to to fill the moment and make the person whatever or or like again, like I said, like we're having some back and forth, and something makes me laugh, and uh, I, I I I can't allow myself the same way in the joke to um, to not speak on it if it's not based in some truth, so I'm connected to it. I my body won't allow myself to like fully like fake laugh. Does that make sense? Yeah, I just no, I understand. I just yeah. When, when you think something's funny, you'll uh, in some people don't do anything. Some people say funny. Some yeah. people smile. Some laugh. Whatever it is. Yeah, I, I totally get it. I'm not like somebody like like Josh Wolf. I feel like has a great, genuine laugh, and I feel like when he really laughs, <clears throat> the uh, in the moment for what's happening, it's like I feel like it's always tried and true. And I'm envious of that. My my question about this is because there it's no right and wrong, and you have to like figure out making people comfortable keep also keeping the flow going because a lot of times if you don't laugh or acknowledge then it's like acknowledge me you know call it's a call and response yes i totally get that um and i wonder where you know there's there's an equilibrium that i that that is when does and this is a real question when does that does that for you ever get in the way of something else for example if you didn't do that, mm. would it ever not make uh, on the far end of the spectrum was it would then make something uncomfortable. But on the on the uh, on not as dramatic is it's like it would maybe mess up the flow or the rhythm a little. Yeah, where I mean, it's it's a good point to make. It's a good argument to make. I mean, I know I definitely saw some feedback on that when I had Bill Burr on where there were things that um, that were really funny that I remember laughing at. And then I remember seeing some comments of people saying, like, oh, it's fake laugh to whatever. And I was like. I, I see that. Oh, interesting. I never saw your laugh as fake. And then I go, I go, I can see what they mean by that. I go, I definitely did laugh really hard. Probably also excited to talk to him. Totally. Yeah. So, yeah. I'd be laughing so, a ton talking to him no matter what. Yeah. And I just, I literally am like, I almost have laughs waiting as if it's puke. Uh-huh. And I'm getting ready to puke. And it's just like, he, I'm just waiting. I, I feel like every other sentence of his is going to, is just, he can't help it, is, is just yeah. going to be funny. So it's almost like I'm laughing preemptively. Also, as you say that, you know, you're talking about your version of not being able to get those laughs out as much as maybe you'd want. Yeah. That, that like, you have them ready. Like, having Bill on, there's probably an excitement of, like, we all want to have those laughs. It feels so good. Yeah. So, like, you're looking for, you know, a person is looking for them. Almost like when an audience goes to a comedy club and wanting to laugh. Yeah. We don't really get that that much. But I'm watching you do that, and I don't think of it in a way, oh, I don't like it or it's not real. I look in a way of, like, I find you to be, not that I'm unlikable, I don't think I'm unlikable, but I just find you to be likable. Thanks. Like, you're watching you laugh, and I do observe that that's not a real, not that it's fake, but that's not, you know, that's him on camera, that's him with a guest. Well, because you've seen me laugh till I cry. I also just, you could, we could tell, yeah. we know. But it's also, there's something about it, like... Is it, like, talk showy? Like, I remember um, a few comics told me once when we did a live podcast, they're like, man, you should host a... Oh, it was Owen Benjamin, actually. He goes, you've got what Fallon... Yeah, you've got a talk show. Th- Absolutely. He says, Great you've call. got what... Fa-, he goes, you... I see what in you what I what Fallon has. He goes, you should really uh, pursue that avenue. He goes, you make people look good and you want to make people feel good. When when it's... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I go, I think I do have a good ability to do that and keep it moving and, and pumping jokes and whatever. But um, 
innately, you know, because I'm a people pleaser. So it's like I want to, yes, I, you know, I want the experience to be fun. And so, um, but I, yeah, but I, but I don't know. It goes, um, and uh, uh, I mean, we're already talking about it, so it is what it is. But like, if you don't want to talk about this, well, I love this, Please. and we've yeah, never talked about this on our podcast. Yeah. But like, there's a lot of ways to go with us as interview slash conversationalists for the podcast or talk shows, whatever it is. And it's not right or wrong. It's just, you know, you find your path and yeah. this is this thing and this is this thing. And just because this is the voice of the show doesn't mean it's the only voice of the host. Yeah. But you choose the thing that you kind of lean into, right? Or you don't choose it, but it happens, at least not consciously. And I find that what where you and I differ, because there's obviously so much where we're the same, um, is not for better or worse, you... Your show, not you, your show leans more into the feel good, likable, digestible, mm-hmm. and mine, not by conscious design, but just happens to be when it's not just goofy farts and mustaches, there is a lot of uncomfort and weird and, uh, yeah. and on the good side, I we get stuff that's like people, I, I care, I believe it, I'm interested, I'm learning, people are seeing something they didn't see, but on the other hand, there's a lot of people like... Glassman makes it weird. This is uncomfortable. Yeah. Why does he have to do this? Do you like that? I understand it. I would rather than be like, I love this. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember people, people, you know, you know me for a long time and Rick loves to make people feel weird on stage. And no, I don't. I, I, I wouldn't I, say that, by the way. Good. That wouldn't be my assessment. But that's just because I have an understanding of what you're doing on, on stage. I want people to like it. Yeah. It's just a byproduct because people feel weird and it hasn't stopped me yet because I'm trying to figure this out. I would, even the first time I saw you, I, I which I remember vividly at uh-huh. the Hot Cafe. Yeah. Me I, too. W- I would not ever have uh, thought, oh, this guy's going up there to try to make people uncomfortable. Cut to, me and, uh, cut to a clip of me taking a dump on like, you know, <laughs> on standing a on a table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, they're not yeah. shows. <laughs> I don't know. Do you remember That's the, funny. do you remember, <laughs> do you remember the joke, the, uh, I want to know how many of these standard universal kid jokes you had, not in like a snaps book of yo mama jokes, but like the tropes of stand up. What do you call nachos that aren't yours? The first jokes that you heard that you know that were fucking the town bicycle. Sure. E- everybody got a right. I know you well enough to let me do this for you. I know you got a few you want to pull out. <laughs> you have to have some examples. Oh, yeah. Well, like the nacho cheese one. Yeah, the nachos. Not, what they're you, not yours. What do you call not nacho? What do you call nacho cheese nachos that aren't? Wait, what do you call nachos that aren't yours? Not yours. No, no, nacho, nacho nachos. Not your nachos. <laughs> wait, that was a joke. <laughs> what do you call nacho cheese nachos that aren't yours? Boo! <laughs> uh. There's such a such a line as we're getting uh. into, and maybe we'll, we'll ending this conversation or the podcast soon. But I just think it's a it's <laughs> or my a, career based on that joke. Um, it's just such a, a, a an interesting layer of like uh. all of all of our friends have podcasts, and we all have our similarities and our differences. But then you go into another layer, and what are our similarities and differences as podcast hosts? And by happenstance or subconscious. Or maybe consciousness. By the way, happenstance and subconscious, it sounds like a beach duo from the 80s that I would definitely support. Funny. Ron Happenstance. <laughs> Jim Subconscious. All right. <laughs> he needs a short, you need a shorter name. Happenstance think, and who? Uh, happenstance and what have you. Still too long. Happenstance and Smith? Sounds like a law firm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you need. The, the deal's in like. Uh, it's got to go long and short. Happenstance and. Uh, that has to have something to do with happenstance. Like Julio and Sprite. Happenstance and Iota. There you go. Still a little too long. Happenstance and Oda. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Let me finish this thought uh, uh, and tell me your thought on it. All right. If, I, if you got to take this to the next level, which is hmm. you selling this podcast to yeah, know. you know a thing um, or you that? know talk show or whatever it is, what is the personality, what that you think that you could tap into that is the best version of yourself Great in question. this thing. I have a buddy that's pushing me on that all the time, trying to use all the weapons. Because I feel like this is just one one yep. piece of me doing this. And I feel like at some point, I got to take it up a notch, but also advantage of the fact of like... Happenstance and an up a notch. <laughs> <laughs> Happenstance and up a notch kind of sounds like a thing. Up a notch sounds like a, a theme park. Or a 
happenstance and up a notch. Come on. It's good. It does sound like a Jewish deli. Not that there's anything wrong with <laughs> delis. <laughs> no. But does it have to be Jewish? Well, most of them are. Name me a non-Jewish deli. Go. There's, there's tons of... of, of, of uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, take, a, take back his bar mitzvah certificate. You know that my parents... My mom says this isn't true, and it is 100% true. She showed me her perfume uh, uh, dungeon while I was high as fuck. Collection, not dungeon. Come on. <laughs> it's a dungeon. It's downstairs, and it's wall-to-wall, hall-to-hall. Happenstance and what have you. What was it? Up a notch. Yeah. Not good, yeah. By the way, awful last name. What's your first name if up a notch is your last take name? Take it. Take it? <laughs> take it? Yeah, take it up a notch. Take it up a notch. Yeah. And everyone goes, take Take it. He goes, take it, man. Yeah, not everyone, but it's the bullies. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, I got gifts for my bar mitzvah, and um, there were a couple that, like, from people that my mom wanted to know what did they give my son, I guess. So, non Jews. So they op- my mom opened some of the envelopes. Did we give him a so, shofar? Let me tell the fucking story. <laughs> my mom stole my bar mitzvah money and will not admit to it, but they paid for my college. Uh, she stole or it? my bar mitzvah did. Uh, well, no, I just, where is it? Where is my bar mitzvah money? This is a big deal, by the way. This is a kid detective show. You calling your mom? Fuck yep. yeah, dude. It's going to be Lamorne. <laughs> <clears throat> Get Debbie. She's going to say that she gave it to me. Bullshit. When? Will your mom ever not pick up? How many rings will it take? Always three. <clears throat> Hello, mom? Yes, Ricky? Did you or did you not take my bar mitzvah money? Well, first of all, let's acknowledge that three rings and I picked up. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you always pick up at three. So, your bar mitzvah was a glorious day. I remember it like it was Tuesday. The sun was shining in Cleveland. Everyone was fired up for the Hebrew Festival of Lights. Which was months away because your bar mitzvah was, I think, in July. It was summertime in Cleveland. LeBron had just left high school. And everyone was looking to titty fuck. But that's a story for another day, because this is all about (laughs) the bar mitzvah money scandal of 1994. Rick was just a tiny cock little Jew boy (laughs) running around in his Ninja Turtle underwear with his G.I. Joe dildo. And this kid was gay, but not that there's anything wrong with the G.I. Joes. So I remember he got at least $50 in checks. And then I noticed one check for $1,000 and another for $20,000. And I said, I'm taking all this money because he doesn't deserve it. Because he's a boy. What's he going to spend it on? Sandwiches and goop? <laughs> Don't cancel me. I said goop. So anyway, I think there's something to be said about, look, you're a tiny cock boy, Jew boy in Cleveland. You're running around, yada, yada, yada. You shoot your three-pointers. You play with yourself. And you go, I need money for snacks, Mom. I got to go to the mall. I'm taking Rhonda to the movie theater. Angels in the Outfield is back in theaters. So, you know, and by that point, you know, by that point, they've turned the lights off and they've taken the mics apart. So you're asking yourself, where's the money? Where's the money? Is it in my bank account? Well, you know, I would like to see you try to access my bank account, Richard. You're a tiny cock Jew boy. So that's the story of how your money was lost, which I did steal because I'm your mom and I can do whatever the fuck I want. I'd like to see you step to me in these streets. You're a little boy. I'm your mother. The end. Taking it to the streets. It's time to go to infinity and beyond with Disney's brand new sexually frustrated Buzz Lightyear. Take him out of the box, smile, and high five your friends. Extend his wings, spoon with him, and lose your fucking mind. It's time to take flight and soar into the space galaxy above. Yeah! Relive all your favorite moments from the movie. You're my best friend, Buzz. Touch my dick. Huh? And comes with all your favorite catchphrases. To the titty bar and beyond. What do you mean you've never seen Honey, I Shrunk the Kids? Hey, we should totally get your dog high. 
Mom? The Toy Story Collection sexually frustrated Buzz Lightyear. Whether you like it or not, he's coming down to Earth to do what he does best. Be your friend. Batteries not included, other figures each sold separately. Of course I have Coke, but you gotta find it, bitch. So, uh, congrats on the show, Thank the you. Amazon show. Thank you. Um, it's called Have We Seen It? And, uh, as we see it. As we see it. But have they? You're getting good at this. I would like to close out with um, two things. One is a, um, a, a get to know Rick Glassman inside the actor's studio, 10 question questionnaire. 10? Yeah. It's uh, RIP <laughs> James Lipton, the uh, master of ceremonies, used to close out every interview with this. No doubt would have oh, been yeah, on the show. Oh, yeah. You used to point. come in at the end of your epi- podcasts. Yeah. That's a bummer. I forgot you guys were friends. Yeah. RIP. And so uh, we're paying homage, homage, uh, homage to, uh, homage. to Lipton. Um, and we're going to get to know Rick Glassman. Here we go. I'm going to be Lipton and you're going to be Rick. <clears throat> well, let's bring in Lipton. Okay, cool. Oh, so disrespectful. <laughs> I was getting into character. You know what that reminded me of? Real quick, when I was playing Wolverine at Universal Studios, there was a uh, guy, you know, there was th- I was third string Wolverine, right? Because I got hired. There were two other, wo- sit the fuck down, dude. <laughs> there were two other Wolverines above me. And um, and so we would trade off. You were, on 20, you were on 35 minutes and then off 20 minutes. And you did that seven, eight times a day. How is so, that possible? When you're off 20, that means the other Wolverine's only doing 20 minutes. Okay, Not so 35. 35, 25 maybe. Does that it sound right? 35, 35. You guys switch. Yeah. If you're doing 35 minutes, there'd be two Wolverines a break. day. Well, sometimes there just wasn't Wolverine out there. I love that you're just like, that doesn't make sense. That can't be a part of the day where Wolverine's not present. Oh, okay. Sometimes he just wasn't out there. And you had maybe an extra Beetlejuice. I don't know. Say that two more times. An extra Beetlejuice. An extra Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> James? <laughs> so I'm we're crossing paths, and I'm just standing there, and he walks off set. And I'm getting ready to go back out and kind of pull my pants up, making sure my fangs and my <laughs> my sideburns are sticking. And he walks off and he just sees me just dicking dicking around or waiting to go on set and pretend to be a theme park superhero. And he goes, "What are you doing?" This guy Mark, wish I remember his last name, always rode a motorcycle. Oh, it'd be so cool like to have him on your podcast. And you- he and he saw me and he goes, "What are you doing?" I go, "I'm getting ready to go out and uh, make these kids believe." And he goes, "You don't get in character." And I go, "What do you mean?" And he goes. Got your Wolverine. These kids are gonna believe you're Wolverine. This is like my third day. He's like, these kids are gonna believe you're Wolverine. I see you back here just pulling your fucking pants. Like you don't even look like you don't even feel like Wolverine right now. <laughs> he goes, you're not even trying to get in a character. Just busting my balls. And so I just look at him. I go, fine. <laughs> I go, oh, I'm Wolverine. And dude, he fucking just stormed. I thought he was gonna punch me in the face, but I did that, and I hadn't done that since then. It just reminded me of that. Small world. Great show. All right, Rick. What's your favorite word? What's your favorite word? These types of things, I'm not even, I'm not joking, are very tough for me. Right. I don't like doing. I, 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 it, it, There's I've, no right or wrong answer, and it cannot even be your favorite. Give me a favorite word. Spatula. Great. What's your least favorite word? Spatula. What turns you on? Confidence. What turns you off? Lying. What's your favorite curse word? You can't say bitch. It. Yeah. What sound or noise do you? I like? can't say what. You can't say fuck, shit, tits, cocksucker. I don't know something about like bitch. Yeah. Could be a bitch. Yeah, that's probably not my favorite, but it is a swear word. Just change that question to what's a swear word, <laughs> <laughs> or give me a swear word. What noise or sound do you love? Uh, uh, rain. Beautiful. What sound or noise do you hate? Chewing. What profession other than your own? What was that the act out that you just did? I don't know, man. Was that was it's, that you going into space? It's almost one thirty. <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? A professional basketball player. Love that. What profession would you not like to do? You can say stripper. I mean, I'd be insecure, but that wouldn't be my least favorite thing to do. Yeah. Um, Fluffer, a nine to five is yeah, that an office gig. Something, uh, something where, where I'm not freedom. create feeling uh, creatively fulfilled, uh, and I also don't have any equity into the thing I'm doing. Could you write jingles? Uh, yeah, great. 
if heaven exists, <laughs> what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? That's something I'm going to keep between me and uh, me and her. I love that. Put on the headphones real quick. So you said you like to write jingles. And one thing that Rick and I, you mind turning me up a little bit too, Bri, in the uh, cans? Check, you check, turn check, him down check, in mine? check. <clears throat> uh, one thing you and I have I, done. I don't hear anything. Okay. Check, check, check. Can you hear? Maybe. Check, yeah. check. Check, check. You can turn me up a little bit more, Bri. There we go. Yeah. Check, check. One thing uh, you and I do a lot on uh, Tyso, Take Your Shoes Off, the Rick Glassman Show, uh, is uh, make up fun songs. Sure. And so um, I thought we'd close out this show by taking a stab at that. Um, we've got, what, maybe 90 seconds? So Great. perfect. Um, here's a beat from uh, my very own uh, dear friend from Tucson, Arizona, Jeremy Shockley. Uh, oh, at, how do you? At Mr. Oh, cool. Mo. At Mr. You don't know who that is. Jeremy? Jeremy Shockley? Yeah, he sends beats to me all the time. He's awesome. Are you fucking serious? Absolutely not. Hit it. I want you to. Has he gone through to be able to have something? You can turn up if you want. Deep. Just break it down. Just talk about you know life. I guess. He's smoking pot. A mascot. Wolverine. Mask on. Real hot. Rip the scene. Put it up. Put it through. Get the screen. Everybody make a noise. Hear you scream. Whoa! Wolverine is everything to my penis. Get into two Serena's, Venus. We five the ball, back and forth, tennis happen. Will Smith, push it up, let it rap. It. How we do it when we never do? Parents don't under what stand? Three rings when we stand you, stand you. Can I stand you? Eminem fives a way to stand you, stand true. Whether it's you, me, you, got he. <laughs> Take it. <laughs> <laughs> Gummy bears. I'll take the stairs. But if you got any pubic hair. All right. That's uh, Adam Ray. Uh, no, that's about last night. Uh, <laughs> oh, I cried. Same watery cried. eyes. I love you. Love you. Amazon. As we. Uh, you the right, dude. Amazon. May, June, June. <laughs> not going to work here anywhere, that's for sure. Does <laughs> your show come out? In two days. Dude, January 21st on Amazon Prime. It's called As We See It. Starring Rick Glassman. Go see it. I love you. Mmm, Zoa. Thanks, Rock. Guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Hope you enjoyed that episode. It was a good one. A lot of laughs, a lot of tears, a lot of... Uh, stuff to uh to think about and chew on huh because that's what life's all about chewing on the good stuff nobody said that maybe denzel did maybe tom hanks did maybe they said it together in philadelphia the point is click subscribe right here on the aln logo so you can get more episodes and stay up to date when new content drops highlights animations clips it's all here for you baby i'll see you next time well i don't know how to blink